if you sometimes look at your logo designs and you wonder how to fix certain problems or mistakes, don't worry, we've all been there and there are some easy and quick fixes for these kind of bad logo designs. The first problem that I see many beginner and many intermediate designers doing is that they have overly busy logo designs. And here's a classic example. It's a construction logo where the designer has gone wild and basically just created a digital illustration rather than a logo design. The color choices are pretty good though. More about color later. But this design is too hectic and it's too busy to ever be iconic or memorable. It's just way too easy to forget this logo and it's not going to hook into the minds of the target audience. So what we can do is to vastly simplify the design down to something like this design right here. The arrow does suggest a change in movement and we have an easily recognizable and simple iconic building house. This design will be absorbed by the viewers in a matter of milliseconds, which is in comparison to the previous design, which is just way too chaotic to be absorbed. The new design is so iconic that it probably works just fine without the logo type and as a standalone logo mark. In fact, it probably works better like this. The next mistake that logo designers sometimes make is that they have a kind of inappropriate design that they don't even realize sometimes that is inappropriate. Sure, you might laugh at these designs that edge on the confrontational side of things, but imagine if you were a business owner and the designer you've been paying money for comes back with something like this. You probably won't find it that funny then. These designs are pretty funny though, yeah. This designer has taken some of the notoriously inappropriate designs and remade them. A great example is this oriental design that has been remastered perfectly. Also notice how the design respects the first logo fix that we looked at earlier, simplification. The logo just uses a single color and it's an iconic stamped design. So do remember to keep in mind the target audience and question if not the design is going to appeal to them or if it's going to rub them up the wrong way, so to speak. Like a lot of these inappropriate logos surely will. The third logo design problem that needs to be fixed is something I see everywhere these days. And that is the logo type not matching the logo symbol. This means the style of the typography does not match the vibe or the feeling of the logo and this will confuse the target audience and leave the logo looking pretty unprofessional. We do want professional logos, of course. This example of a tech logo uses a playful and organic font, which totally goes against what a tech audience probably relates to. They like something modern, something less organic and more professional. I also couldn't help tilting the logo mark just to see how it would look and turn out. And these aren't my designs, by the way. If you're worried that your design is guilty of this, then go back to the brief and study the target audience. Write down words and phrases that relate to their wants, their needs and their emotions and then match those words to specific styles or typeface. It's just an easy way to create a winning combination when you're working on logo designs. Now, if you are a Satori Graphics aficionado, you will know that I do love motion graphics. And that's exactly why I've taken a short but sweet class by Andrea on After Effects. But before I get into that, you might be wondering, what is Skillshare? Well, it's an online learning community with thousands of online classes with members across 150 countries, and they all come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. I wanted to level up my motion graphics skills. And as you can see, I'm looking into the Adobe After Effects section right here. Now you can choose your experience level and importantly, the amount of time that you want to spend on a class. So if you are like me and you find yourself strapped of free time, you can easily choose the right class that suits your schedule. Anyway, I worked my way through this glitch effect and text animation class by Andrea and it consisted of four different bite-sized lessons. I was really happy with how easy it was to follow and well, check the results for yourself. And if you want to get the opportunity to explore the vast library of lessons on Skillshare across things like graphic design, motion graphics, 3D design, and much, much more, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. So further your education and expand on your skill sets with Skillshare. The next mistake that we're going to see how to fix is a really big pet peeve of mine as a designer, and that is the literal logo designs. You know the story by now, light bulbs for electricians, books for libraries, or in this case here, a bike for a mountain bike brand. How uninspiring does this design look? Jeez. Sure, it's a pretty cool illustration, 
but as an iconic logo, it does nothing more than fall into obscurity and blend into the background of forgettable designs. Now to overcome this, you need to think outside of the box and really just get creative. Now to do that, you need to work hard on making word pairs based on your logo design research. Generate words that relate to the brand, the industry sector, and the target audience, and then generate some interesting pairs. Silverback is a great example of a logo in the mountain biking world, and we don't see a mountain or a bike at all. However, the iconic design works well and it is memorable. The logo type is slanted to give the illusion of motion and speed. So yeah, this is a pretty well thought out design with no literal connotations whatsoever. Then we have a color and boy oh boy, this one can be tough. There are a few different approaches you can take when it comes to choosing the correct color for your logo. Maybe we can do what the designers did for the IKEA or IKEA logo design. They noted how important the origin of the brand is to their story, that being Sweden. And so the logo uses the colors of the Swedish flag. Or you could just simply look at the industry that your client or the company you're designing for is in and then see what kind of colors are the norm for logo designs. And so here for branding, we see a lot of the blue and red being used. So you can choose a color scheme based around that to play it safe or choose a color scheme that contrasts that to make the brand stand out. You could also just think about the kind of feeling you want to evoke with your logo and then apply color accordingly. FedEx wants to emphasize a fast delivery service and so an action related color of orange works well and that's contrasted with a calming color of purple which does give it that kind of professional touch. But if you want to go deeper in the art of using color on graphic designs or logo designs, just click the video on screen. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.